Okay, so let us begin the third module of this lecture. So, let us just paste this theorem. Oops, sorry. for our benefit. So, so, let us just paste this theorem here. Okay, so, corollary. So, let alpha be an irrational assume that there is a beta which is positive and an infinite sequence of rationals p n by q n satisfying uh, let us say of distinct rationals. Satisfying alpha minus p n by q n is strictly less than beta upon q n to the power w n where w n belongs to is integers and w n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. Okay, so, let us assume that we have a real number which satisfies these conditions. Okay, so, then alpha is transcendental. <coughs> Okay, so, how do we prove this? So, we will prove this by contradiction. Okay, so, assume that alpha is algebraic over q. Yeah. And al algebraic of degree m. and it is irreducible polynomial polynomial p of x has degree m. Okay. So, then by Liouville's theorem right then for all rationals by the above theorem there exists a constant c such that c positive for all rationals with q positive alpha minus p by q is strictly greater than 1 upon c times q n. Okay. This is we have just used the previous theorem. Okay. So, what does that mean? So, this implies that. So, we apply this inequality to our rational numbers which are given. So, this implies that we take p by q to be p n by q n. Sorry, this is this should be m. q n to the power m okay this 
the first inequality this inequality is coming from Liouville's theorem and this inequality is given to us right we are given a sequence of rationals such that this is satisfied so in particular this will mean that q n uh, to the power w n minus m is strictly less than beta times c right now beta and c are fixed yeah so if the if all the qn's were greater than or equal to 2 then wn minus m is tending to infinity uh, because we know that wn tend to infinity yeah so we will get a contradiction yeah so we just have to rule out that it's not possible that infinitely many qn's are one okay if qn's if all the qn's are one then we don't get a contradiction right because the left hand side is one and no matter how large the power is it will remain one and the right hand side is some constant yeah so but if we can show that only finitely many of the qn's can be one then we are in good shape because that means after a certain n all the qn's will be at least two the qn's are integers yeah and the powers are going to infinity right so this this lhs is going to become larger and larger and the rhs is constant okay so we are going to do exactly that so let us so we claim that all but finitely many qn's are greater than or equal to 2 okay so let us assume this is not true yeah so let us assume this is not true and we will arrive at a contradiction okay so that is there are infinitely many n with q n is equal to 1 okay but if q n is equal to 1 note that our rational number p n by q n that is an integer right yeah so if q n is equal to 1 then p n by q n is an integer and we have absolute value of alpha minus p n so I can just I do not need to write the q n because we are assuming q n is equal to 1 is strictly less than beta divided by 1 again right because q n to the power w n is going to be 1 yeah but this implies that our p n the distance of p n from alpha is less than beta which means p n has to lie in this alpha minus beta and alpha plus beta right but there are only finitely many integers in this interval right right so that is a contradiction however there are only finitely many integers in the interval alpha minus beta comma alpha plus beta and since we assumed all the p n by q n were distinct right so we get a contradiction okay so only finitely many q n s here can be one right so thus there exists some n such that for all n greater than or equal to n q n is strictly greater than 1 or equivalently q n is greater than or equal to 2 right so this implies that 2 to the w n minus m is less than or equal to q n to the w n minus m is strictly less than beta times c right but this is this gives a contradiction
as w n minus m tends to infinity. Right? The beta times c is constant and on the, and on the left hand side we have 2 to the power w n minus m. m is fixed, yeah? m was a degree of alpha, so the m is fixed and the w n is tending to infinity. So, therefore, w n minus m will also tend to infinity. Okay, so, this gives us a criteria to show how or this gives us a way to produce transcendental numbers, right. So, if we can produce an alpha which satisfies the conditions of this corollary, right, then alpha would be transcendental, okay, and that is what we are going to do next. Okay, corollary. Let alpha be equal to summation n greater than equal to one, one upon ten to the power n factorial. Okay, so then alpha is transcendental over Q. So, we will simply check that alpha satisfies the conditions of the previous corollary. Okay. So, let us begin. So, we first define P m by Q m to be equal to summation n equal to 1 to m 1 upon 10 to the power n factor. So, then alpha minus p m by q m is equal to summation n greater than equal to m plus 1, 1 upon 10 to the power n factorial, which let us just write it out. Okay. Now, note that m plus k factorial is equal to m plus 1 factorial times m plus 2 times m plus 3 m plus k and this is obviously greater than equal to times k. Okay. So, this implies that alpha minus p m by q m is equal to 1 upon m plus 1 factorial plus 1 upon m plus 2 factorial and so on and we use this inequality over here to say that this is strictly less than factorial times 2 m plus 1 factorial times 3 and so on right so we let uh, alpha be equal to 1 upon 10 to the power m plus 1 factorial so then this thing is equal to oops let's say gamma sorry it's bad notation so this thing is equal to gamma plus gamma square plus gamma q plus 1 right so therefore which is equal to gamma divided by 1 minus gamma right so uh, and so yeah so what is this into 1 upon 1 minus okay so notice that 1 minus 
factorial is uh, is greater than 1 by 2 when m is greater than or equal to 1 right so okay so which implies that 2 is to k Okay. So, then this implies alpha minus p m by q m is strictly less than 1 upon 10 to the power m plus 1 factorial times 2. Okay. But now, notice that what is this p m by q p m by q m was defined to be this thing, this is equal to some p m divided by q m is actually 10 to the power m factorial, right, because when we clear the denominators, yeah, so q m is equal to 10 to the power m factorial. So, this we can write as this equal to 2 upon 10 to the power m factorial to the power m plus 1, this equal to 2 upon q m to the m plus 1. Okay. So, what we have shown is that I mean alpha minus p m by alpha is this thing and alpha minus p m by q m is obviously positive. So, we have proved that alpha minus p m by q m is strictly less than 2 upon q m to the power m plus 1. Right, which is precisely one of the conditions in our corollary. Right, we needed a sequence of rationals which satisfies this condition, right. So, the w m, the, the w m for us is m plus 1, which is tending to infinity, right. So, w m is equal to m plus 1, which tends to infinity as m tends to infinity. But there is one condition which we need to check that alpha is irrational. Right. So, look at the corollary. So, we need to check that alpha is irrational and the, the second condition is what we have checked. So, we still need to check the first condition that alpha is irrational. Yeah. So, but that is easy. So, suppose alpha was rational, alpha belongs to q, then we can write alpha is equal to p by q. Okay. Now, alpha minus p m by q m is positive, right? Because alpha is a sum of some things and p m by q m is a sum of alpha is defined as a sum of positive things and p m by q m is a subset of that. Yeah. So, alpha minus p m by q m. So, yeah. so mod alpha minus p m by q m, this is a non-zero number and this is equal to p by q minus p m by q m, which is equal to p q m minus divided by q q m, right. So, the numerator is an integer and it is non-zero, right. So, this implies this is greater than or equal to 1 upon q q m. Right, because the numerator is an integer and it is non-zero, so that is absolute value has to be greater than or equal to 1. So, therefore, we get and we use this inequality right, but this would imply that q m 
to the power m is strictly less than 2q. Right? But that is obviously a contradiction because 2 times q is, co is a constant and qm is equal to 10 to the power m factorial. So, qm to the power m is going to grow very fast as m tends to infinity. And this, this equality, inequality is happening for all, right, which is a contradiction. This is a contradiction. Right? So, thus alpha satisfies both uh, assumption, both the hypothesis of the previous corollary. And this implies that alpha is transcendental. So, we will stop here.